or then approximately the same age bracket, uh, late 60s, 70s, where the Gemini program was being built. And that's probably where she got the influence of the space program. And my dad was working on Gemini at the time. And I was asking him, what, when I got to be um, like 15, 16, I was starting to ask him delicately questions about uh, intimate relations in space. And uh, uh, as far as I know, that's uh, the Russians did that first. <laughs> and uh, OK, um, and I'm going to read uh, uh, three or four on the new side, and then probably just randomly flip through my book, which I tend to do in these kind of events. <laughs> OK. Solipsism is a great way to meet girls. The sky in this poem is not the sky you know. The river in this poem is and is not your river too. The author of this poem is one part of a neocortex in the universe you know. A neocortex can hold a universe as a series of Russian dolls hold each other. And Uh, the best poem. This is probably a revision of one I did uh, years ago. The best poem. The way this poetry thing works, if I understand it, which I'm definitely not sure of, I should put it in a poem here and now. And that poem should be a certain type of thing. Not a bird. Not the death of infinity. It should be between this size and this size. Just for grins, let's pretend the poem is already here. And if someone asks you, Say it is the best poem you ever knew. Uh, it's another revision of an earlier one. Future statistics. During the 2020s, TV and video quality passes what we now call real life. In 2080, there are more websites than birds. And one day, Jehovah asks us to call him by his first name. And I will never be with you again. And dead pets don't return. And UFOs don't land. I never get into the second floor of my house, which I have only seen in dreams. Around two, the year 2000, it was as if a ball hit a wall and bounced backwards. Again, we live the crusades. Again, raw monkey hatreds rise as stars. We're in a whole series of... Uh, poems about ants, one of which was made, or a couple of which were put into a nice uh, letterpress edition out of Berkeley, and this is one of the last. I'm going to read two of the last ones here. Um, ants ate. I hear songs faint and sad about how I drown them in my sink and smash them in my books and imprint them in my dish rag, and the vibrate antenna to sing smell songs of revenge or of a few bits of watermelon left on the rind, a few drops of Dr. Pepper in the can. These ants also want me in a sexual way. To them, I am the god, I am the cow god, I am freaking Gia. Nature symbolized in bits of food strewn in jungles of hair and random vengeful death. God, makers, commuters, assembly line workers, patriots to swarm and family. Ants and trillions weigh more in total than the billions of humans. Ants and some of those trillions live in your house, and if they laugh at you, you will never know. <laughs> this is a poem about when the ants just one day just kind of disappeared, or at least that's what precipitated this poem. It's not a poem about that exactly. On the day all the ants disappeared, we decided to become ants to replace them. Then robots to decide, decided to become people to replace us, and dogs decided to become robots to replace them. And cars decided to become dogs to replace them. I felt the lack of ants up to my eyeballs until the ants returned to replace the cars the next trip around the sun. That's <laughs> <laughs> probably not that new stuff. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this is an... Uh, uh, okay, I don't need to introduce it. This is a... Uh, Obviously an erotic love poem kind of thing. Farewell to S, who answers the phone while making love. Uh, starts with an epigram. You're waiting for the person with the name you keep mumbling in your sleep that no one ever heard of. There's no one named that really except yourself, maybe. And that's a quote from uh, Mae Swinson. 
the key to everything. Uh, this is divided uh, into three sections, a beast with two backs. We were on a living room chair. I was licking the webbing between your right thumb and forefinger while watching in the home mirror small motions of your lower back. Right then you said we had to talk and asked me to do a letter of recommendation on your lovemaking. I stopped long enough to type three pages. Praise your creativity. Roadkill, section two. How many copies, I ask? And why does a mirror reverse images right to left but not from up to down? You took your nose out of my left armpit and said, the best flowers have aphids. The best mirror is memory, because it is never true. The best time is never now. In the past, it was the future, and the future will be the past. The best highways have roadkill. Section three, do not try this at home. These are trained actors. That week, I took out a personal ad which said, next woman to sleep with me gets a free set of Benoit balls and frequent flyer miles. You were passing out your resume and his Cthulhu set of Lesba. You hauled ashes all around town while negotiating for a new position. Just last week, I called you. Your husband's tongue was inside you. You screamed and called my name. It was just like old times. That's a funny one to just randomly pick, okay. <laughs> ants 2, the sequel. A colony of red ants lived in the passenger door of my 1960 Aqua Ford half ton. Each night the ants would come out to feast on a few drops of Dr. Pepper left in each of the four to six cans I drank that day. When I left too much Dr. Pepper in a can, dozens of ants would drown. And when I picked up the can and tilted it, the small bodies would pour out. Once I left the key in the ignition and woke to find the truck down the street. From where I left it, the neighbor's dog disappeared that night. The ants had used my truck to find something more filling than Dr. Pepper. After that, I started seeing ants in my dreams on my computer screen and when I stared directly at the sun. And the city was starting to look like an ant hive and I felt like a worker drone. At a party, I saw an ant, one of those large red and black ones, come out of the ear of a man. And the way he smiled, I knew he was an ant too. <laughs> Design and function. The Whaley Doubter Jing was attached to the oak bookcase on my porch by a garden spider egg case last winter. In the spring, it was like 2,000 Mongols on the step. And even though I wanted to read the book, I knew I would have to wait until the frost after the spiders of the Doubter Jing kill a thousand flies. The mushrooms on the wall want my porch to rejoin nature, and my oak bookcase strains to grow again. UFOs, on the edges of America, despite all of the churches of Christ and 7-Elevens, on, on lonely nights there is often only the cold burning of stars so far away. And the empty bottles and bags of herb testify we are tired of being only ourselves all the time. And half long for, half fear, a new gnosis and awe from the firmament. We seek the aliens humans are steadily becoming. Modern poetry. Time was you could turn out a halfway decent poem on a vegematic, a poem that would not talk back. You could invite it for tea. It would not seduce your wife. All you needed were images of birds and dead Greeks, <coughs> two pounds almond flavored iambic, iambic and youth being a spring day. Nowadays, even Superman can turn out a good poem. Adjectives run the street, barely missing cars, and you can hear the lawn scream as it is cut. The motto of most poetry, like mostly everything, is this space for rent. And for poetry to not become the arcane specialty of Byzantine business bees, it must be like after a rain, water dripping off eaves and trees, the child runs out and with triumph jumps and scatters a puddle all over. Statistics, or stats. Because I am a guy, I find great joy in statistics, batting averages, rebounds, points per game. In fact, life, when barren of numbers, seems bereft. So I am working to make life into a sport. I have statistically a great marriage. 
Our making love per night average is almost 410 nights, a whopping 395. The first 10 months it was over 1.0, some months recently we have sagged to 0.250. Money buys happiness 9 sixteenths of the time, and the price of my dog's loyalty is a respectable $648. <laughs> no one has paid that so far. I live my life better than 83% of the fools out there, and the sunset is a three-point field goal. <laughs> so how are we doing on time? How long have I been up? 15 minutes? or? Give, 15 minutes out of 20, is that about Give right? yourself seven more minutes, how's that? <laughs> okay, that sounds cool. I'll do the original ants poem. Each morning I wipe lines of ants off kitchen counters until the rag I use is like vanilla ice cream with chocolate sprinkles. Sometimes I flush so many down the sink the water hesitates. But like some dumb animal, the ants press on into the fridge, frozen bodies like bits of black pepper. Still, they make it into the blackberry jelly, such heroism. And they climb over their dead, carrying bits of jelly back to the wall. They are not an army, as many have said, but an assembly line. The world is their factory. Each night comes the same dream. It starts with me asleep. Two lines of small black ants come from the wall. They walk up my night table onto my left hand. I feel each leg touch the sensitive hairs as the lead ants go one into each nostril. I can't describe the itch and tickle as the ants do move down my throat into my gut and then the first to emerge from the anus. <coughs> the lines then head back towards the wall, each ant carrying something which had once been food. But if it is only a dream, why haven't I taken a dump or piss for over a week? While in the shower, the fixture reflects my face. My eyes are empty, not lamps of self, but dabs of jello-like stuff. There is no me in that self. The rest of the day, I just sat by that drain. After a while, two lines of ants come one out of each ear. Each carries something invisible, and I know it's bits of my personality. <laughs> Uh, this is the title poem of the book. Oh, the book, uh, I'm having a sale today. If you pay anything for my book, that's an actual positive number. Uh, I can't owe you money for taking it, but if you pay me anything, you can get copies of my book. Get rid of these, I might go into a second edition. You never know. Okay. Uh, thanks inside other things. In my wallet is my identity. It is where my name, age, weight, and all are kept when I'm not using them. We are always in a week, a month, a year, a now. In the spaces between silence and silence, what is, is. In between daylight is raindrops. In the window, the house flies. The house flies scream and die. Winter bisects summer. There are intervals of you and me. And the heart goes beat, silence beat. And a rock tossed in a pond throws ripples. I lift my hand above my face and spread my fingers. In between my fingers is night. For a platonic friend, as I said to your husband, you and I have many times have been lovers, just not for each other. But give me permission, dear, to say with no fear, during the last five minutes of my life, that you could have made a great wife. I will say your name once softly, along with all I have known most dearly. And if it pleases will you, will you devote to me a footnote on page 53 of your autobiography. And remember that Plato meant in symposium where he talked of his sexual bent, a platonic relation to be antithesis to domesticity, concave or convex, it can fit either sex, oral and or anal, perhaps often but banal, but based on friendship and respect.